guys! Welcome to another episode of 1000 Lies. Uh, we're gonna pick up right where we left off. We got that one mysterious email. We're heading to the park to find out who it is from and we're just gonna jump right back in. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes of this and other awesome goodness that happens here on the channel. And let's get started. So let's go ahead and load this up. It's been a while since the day's lessons ended and I went back home. But that very afternoon, I would have to pass by school again. I leave the clinic that's next door to my school, and I decide to take a detour through the scenic route. These jams, though. There's a park with a small pond located behind the school, and I wander there from time to time. It's sloppier than you'd expect. The water is nearly dried up and has a strange hue that's extremely off-putting. That doesn't change the fact that it's quite quiet and welcoming here when you just want to take a peaceful stroll. As I sit in the park on a bench on the edge of the road, I flip my pen in frustration and I'm unable to recall the words for its paper counterpart. Then with a heavy sigh, somehow my thoughts are suddenly led astray. I still have time to go and take a look at the place the email mentioned. I remember, this is, okay, this is us. Uh, I remember the place not being too far from here, and even though I know it's stupid, it still piques my interest. Forget it, forget it, I said. I wouldn't go. Why would I, anyway? To make a fool out of myself in front of Ziva? I don't have to prove anything to anyone. Aussie would also... Aussie also said he would... We should... Oh my god, I can't talk. Aussie also said we should be making the most of our time we have before our final exams. It's true there isn't much time before the exams begin, and after that I don't have any plans, but is that reason enough for me for an anything goes attitude? That isn't the right question. The most important thing now is to think about what I truly want to do without forgetting to consider the risks. In the worst case scenario, what could it be? A kidnapping? Ugh. I'm not important enough to be kidnapped this elaborately. And if it's just a prank, then who cares? I don't even like this town. I'll just leave once I'm finished high school. I don't really care how the others see me either. I'm curious to know who sent me that stupid email. I should stop overthinking it. Exactly. I should go investigate it and find the truth myself. What now, Ziva? Take that. Thrilled with the results of my monologue, I jumped up and flipped off a random unsuspecting cloud. It's not like I actually care about the cloud's feelings, and it's obvious that I was caught up in the moment and had temporarily abandoned my own principles. What nonsense am I even... That's it! Aw, she's cute! You're totally right. I have to change my attitude. To hell with everything. Hat girl. A huge hat flops out of nowhere, concealing a girl underneath it, who then also decides to flip off an unsuspecting cloud. Upon closer inspection, they see that the hat is a normal size, is normal size, but the girl underneath is just puny. For no apparent reason, the shorty walks up to me and answers a question I haven't even asked. What am I doing here? I've been on that bench the entire time. I was drowning in sorrow until you decided to sit next to me. Naturally, I assumed you were going to hit on me. In fact, I don't know why it doesn't happen more often. Probably because you look like you're five. Although, it's a pity that you just had to be so ugly. No hard feelings, but I have high standards. Burn! Well, well. <clears throat> I mean, you're intriguing in your own way. Yeah. Is she making fun of me? Isn't that good to be so forceful? First impressions aren't everything, girl. The important thing is that you aren't a pervert. You came to cheer me up. Yeah, no, not everything is about you, sweetheart. I don't know how you knew what I was thinking, but your words have inspired me. Thank you so very much. Can I go now, please? Alright, I have no idea what's going on. It seems that when I sat here, I didn't realize someone was sitting here too, and now she thinks I was talking to her all along. That's what I get for thinking out loud. Normally people would think you're crazy for doing it. You'd never expect to attract crazy people. I don't know who she is, but I need to stay calm. She's like a predator. I mustn't let her smell my fear. She's sniffing me. You smell like a good person. What are you, a dog? I think I'm gonna like you after all. You have a better chance than I initially thought. You should be proud of yourself. You're scaring me. I'll do like you said and just enjoy the moment. 
like my condition shouldn't be an obstacle and overthinking it isn't going to solve anything. I wonder if she's sick or something. Crazy, do not touch. Oh, Lord, I just realized that. Right, so it's been a pleasure finally meeting you face to face. Until next time. So is she the one that emailed me then? Thank you again. She leaves as suddenly as she appeared. I would like to say something in reply, but I'm speechless. In fact, I think I peed myself a little. God, she's a tiny woman. She can't be that scary. Tossing aside things I'd rather forget, I'm here to check this place out because of that mysterious email. I was thinking there'd be a cowboy or something to challenge me to a duel, but nobody else is here. I should have known that considering where I am, in an unfinished neighborhood. They started building a ton of complexes here a little less than a decade ago, but they blew the budget before finishing them. This playground is one of the few things they managed to finish, but with no one living around here, no wonder it isn't popular. I can confirm that personally, since I usually pass close to this area when I visit the library and I've never seen anyone here before. It seems that I came here for nothing, or at least that's what I think until I spot a leg hanging out amongst the tubes, rails, and slides. Keeping my distance, I sneak around the playground trying to find out who that leg belongs to. And sitting there is a girl. A pretty girl. I like her. I immediately recognized her, not identity, but the gesture she's making. Between her fingers, she holds a pencil, which she uses to trace lines along a sketchbook that's propped up against her knees. While listening closely, I can hear her humming. Sometimes she rubs her pencil against her lips while in thought or looks away from the sketchbook to view her subject from another perspective. She doesn't seem to notice my presence as I hide behind a tree, planning the best course of action. Oh my god, a girl! How do I talk to her? Alright, Saran. There's nobody else around here, so she must be the one who sent that email. Or at least, she must be somehow involved with it. So, I go out. Wanting an explanation to that email seems easy enough. As soon as I begin to emerge from my hiding spot, I immediately jump back behind the tree. Wait a second. If she's waiting for me, then why is she sketching? She seems too immersed in her drawing to be waiting for someone. She hasn't even looked at anything but her paper and the subject. Actually, it must be difficult to see much from her vantage point. If she's waiting for me, it'd make more sense to wait from where she can see the entrance. Another possibility is that she wants to ambush me. That account for why she's hidden, then maybe she got too caught up in her art and forgot about me. In that case, I should try to catch her off guard. Why am I ever thinking this? I have the upper hand. I just need to move first. I should just be friendly and give her a good first impression. It'd still be a surprise attack, but not as aggressive. I stealthily step out of my hiding spot. With cat-like reflexes, I climb up the slide and grab one of the monkey bars near where I want to slide down next. I sneak behind the girl with the intention of surprising her before she can react to anything. Gotcha. Eh? And she's gone. <laughs> she's gone. I fail my mission miserably and decide to survey the area just in case when I finally notice her running out of the park fleeing with all her art supplies in hand. So we terrified her. Oh, that's so suave. Now what do I do? I scratch my head in confusion with no plan of action until I gaze at the nearby garbage can. She probably hasn't yet realized that nobody comes here to empty the trash, seeing as it's filled with her scraps of paper from failed drawings. It's pretty full, so she probably comes here often. The scraps have all kinds of illustrations clearly drawn by someone with natural talent of animals and fantasy creatures one would expect from a movie. They aren't a work of an expert, though they have a quality that dazzles me, except for a small detail that's written next to them. This one has a story that begins with an intercountry religion war that somehow ends with an intergalactic war with vampires. Another is about magicians summoning spirits in a post-apocalyptic city. Their enemy seems to be a gangster werewolf, also from space. This one stars a group of globe-trotting demon-hunting mercenaries. The demons aren't from space this time, but hyperspace. We gotta get serious there. Uh, this is giving me an aneurysm. The art's good, but the concepts not so much. They're too cliche. I'm starting to wonder if they're all actually parodies. Maybe she's mocking me, or maybe these are clues of some kind. While busy putting my detective skills to the test, I slip on something and lose my balance. Looking down, I find the culprit is a common drawing pencil. That's weird. I saw her using this a minute ago. For her to drop it like that, she must have been in a pretty big hurry. Yeah, trying to get away from your ass. When I realized something. This happened to me at the pond, too. I was talking out loud without noticing. She must have heard me while I was rambling behind the tree and must have scared her. That must be why she ran away. She has to be involved with that email. She ran away because I was about to catch her. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. 
She ran away because you look like a creeper. Okay, okay. I can't let things end like this, right? We haven't finished business, my dear nameless artist. So, do we go with the quiet artist? Or do we go with the uh, girl that looks like a kid? No, wait. What am I doing? I mean, yeah, okay. Maybe I got caught up in all of the excitement. Let's just say that sometimes I get lost in thought, maybe lose control of myself. It's because of those kinds of situations that I'd rather take things slowly and consider my options first. When I decide to improvise, nothing good ever comes of it. After leaving the playground, okay, it just showed us at home, so why are we just now leaving the playground? After leaving the playground, I tried to catch up with the mysterious girl before I lost sight of her, while also trying to be careful as to not let her see me. I couldn't just approach her with other people around. They might get the wrong idea if she goes on the defensive or accuses me of something. Okay, that sounds very creepy and stalkerish. Like, I'm going to follow her, but I don't want to approach her if there's other people around. Because, you know, something bad might happen. Finding the ideal moment was essential, although I think my decision was bad since I decided to... Hide inside of a cardboard box. Oh my god, this this poor boy is like the most oblivious child. Like in this one kid's game, every time she'd make an unexpected move, I'd stop and conceal myself under the best possible camouflage ever. That only works in video games, that does not work in person. It was an easy task considering my 35 years of experience as a triple agent for some of the most important spy agencies in the world. Well, no, to be honest, it was just an excuse to spy on someone while hiding inside a cardboard box. It was on my bucket list. No intentions were good, and that's all that matters, right? It was a pity that everyone kept pointing me out. It sure didn't help my stalking. That's what's their problem with people who like hiding cardboard boxes. If it becomes a trend, you'll come begging me to help you. Still, I have to say that it was incredibly uncomfortable. It's a good thing that I'm the kind of person who follows his convictions through the end no matter what. By staying well hidden, I was able to continue following my target. This is this is so creepy. After changing streets, the target changed directions at an intersection and went down a street I knew well. Usually, since I usually take it on my way home to school. It was hard to keep up with her the whole way. I'm not good at sports. In fact, I'd say I'm below average as far as proficiency is concerned. Not that it's easy to sprint while wearing a box. But that girl seemed to be competing for the 20 k kilometer power walking Olympic gold medal. Why was she in such a hurry? Trying to get away from you, creepy ass. We've been over this. We passed by a flight of stairs. That would have been a good place to stop, take the stairs down, and return home. I even live nearby, too. What a pity that my common sense was turned off or out of range. Maybe the cardboard box stopped the connection from getting through. Finally, we reached an apartment block, forcing me to leave my companion cube behind. I discreetly followed behind her and used my foot to catch the door before it slammed shut, and then I snuck into the lobby. For a dime, in for a dime, in for a dollar. By then, I'd probably lost sight of my objective. I ran up the stairwell as quickly as I could while my target used the elevator and found myself in front of the apartment she entered only moments ago. Okay, <laughs> this is extremely creepy. Like, I'm just gonna creepily stop this woman until she gets home, sneak into her apartment, and then follow her to find out which apartment she lives in. The pursuit should have ended there, but then she came back out of her apartment. It took less than a minute for her to reappear, having left all of her art supplies inside. Luckily, I was hidden out of sight in the stairwell. Imagine my surprise when she not only walked away, but also left her apartment's door open. The thing is, I've never been good when it comes to resisting temptation, so I took a small peek inside. I saw a single light in one of the rooms. So he just walks up in this girl's apartment. The thing, that brings me to now. I'm shamelessly breaking into a girl's apartment. I was drawn to the light like a moth to a flame, seeing as the rest of her apartment was veiled in darkness, she definitely lives here. The walls are filled with pictures of her, her friends, and family. It's a bit messy overall, but my room still works, so at least I can actually see the floor. She even has some sports trophies on display. The closest thing to trophies you can find in my room are my figurine collection. Same. Worst of all, I can't find any clues to the mystery. My package definitely isn't here, and there isn't any evidence that she knows me. I shrugged before deciding to leave, but not before returning the pencil I found at the playground and placing it on her desk. I figure it's the least I can do. Okay, no, that's just even creepier because now she knows that somebody was in her apartment. At first, I thought about leaving it with the rest of her art supplies, but I couldn't find them, so the desk it goes. I make my way through the darkness and out of her apartment, quietly grumbling and wondering how I can be so unlucky. 
The front door is difficult to open even using my full strength because the frame of the the frame is close to the floor, making it resistant to move. But carefully, I managed to quietly open the door. And she's probably standing there <laughs> watching me leave her fucking apartment. Isn't it hilarious how easily I can just close the door again? <laughs> Sweat is suddenly pouring down my body quicker and harder than any monsoon. She, the mysterious artist, is now standing on the other side of the door. Not that it's weird, considering this is her home, but why did she come back so soon? Why is she always in such a hurry? I'd say if she was going to leave her door open, she probably just ran down the hall to get something, or to see where she dropped her pencil. Calm down, Saran. Calm down. She's outside, and she saw you, but it isn't the end of the world. I've got it. I can jump out the window. It's only the top floor, and I can fly away. Yes, fly away. <laughs> what am I saying? The adrenaline rush isn't letting me think clearly. My fine mind is foggy, and it feels like my thoughts are at odds with each other. On one hand, there's a chance that she's the culprit of the malevolent email. If that's the case, then she won't think it's weird that I'm here and we can talk it through. On the other hand, she might not have anything to do with that and I'll look like I'm a common thief who sneaks into victims' homes, which is probably the case. I'll have to take everything into careful consideration. In some places, they'd make me, they'd take me out back and shoot me for being here. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Yes, an idea. It isn't a good one, I know, but it's better than trying to fly away and that's good enough for me. Actually, I don't even know if it'll help me, but it's already too late. I have to try. I take a deep breath, release it, and then brace myself to speak quickly enough that the artist won't have a chance to respond until I'm done. Hello. In the name of freedom. Ha ha ha. This is the second floor, not third, right? You commie sure build weird houses. America. We build real houses and real first floors. None of that ground floor crap. And why you gotta call it a ground floor anyway? It's got a fucking proper floor, don't it? Who even calls it that? Speak American, why don't you? <laughs> I can't even take this seriously right now. No hard feelings, right? I come in peace. Don't y'all worry. I'm from America. And America's the gospel of the new world. As long as you believe in freedom. So, too, will I believe in you. Everyone is American at heart. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. If you exist, America will come for y'all. Freedom is just like real American hamburgers. Everywhere. Every man, woman, and child of the world that isn't a freedom hating baby Jesus killing. <laughs> Terrorist Warren Kabbalah that feels the power of freedom in his or her heart is a child of America. A brother in arms. Won't y'all let your brother into your house? You castle, my casa. Ain't that what y'all Mexicans say? God bless this country, little girl. God bless you. Ha ha ha. The girl, overwhelmed by my pseudo patriotic spirit, takes a couple steps backwards, speechless. She doesn't scream, just asks who I am. I decide to really get into character and speak with the composure of a true American hero and the grace of one of the founding fathers of the Constitution. Remember my name, little girl, because I'm only saying it once. My name's John. John McKenzie. The lights suddenly go off and I ought to take the opportunity to run to the stairwell and flee like a hillbilly is taking pot shots at me. I would love to say that the miracle was thanks to the soul of Benjamin Franklin summoned by my patriotism, who then destroyed the electrical systems. Sadly, that wasn't it. It was thanks to the automatic timer on the apartment that turns off the porch lights after several minutes to conserve energy. It wasn't part of the plan, but I ran with it anyway. What I'm focusing on right now is escaping as quickly as possible. I'm running out of time. After all, soon the lights will turn on again and... Thief! <laughs> yeah, that would be anybody's reaction to that. Either that or they would think that he's a mental patient. I knew it. I was supposed to be the good guy. How did it turn out like this? And why did I ever think pretending to be American was a good idea? At least I managed to get some distance, I guess. I'm cursing my bad luck when I hear the sound of the elevator moving. It must be that girl trying to catch me. I'm already bad at improvising, but I'm even worse under pressure. I stumble a couple of times on my way down the stairs. That's just the risk one takes when jumping down five steps at a time. How unfortunate that my fear became a reality. Right before I could sprint out of the building, the elevator arrives at the bottom. There's no way to escape. The building is narrow and each floor only has an elevator. A set of stairs and two apartments. I could try to push my way out, but I don't think an assault charge on me... I don't want an assault charge on me too, which would happen considering my awful luck. 
I had decided to run back up the flight of stairs when one of the apartment doors behind me opens, revealing one of the residents. What was that scream just now? Two from upstairs, is everything alright? While the distracted tenant goes up the stairs, I take the opportunity to sneak into his apartment before he returns. Okay, so not only did we break into her apartment, but now we're in somebody else's apartment. Yes, I'm sneaking into another apartment. So what? Who even cares at this point? I've been having a brain fart for too long now. I can't think straight. I would say so. After I enter the apartment, I push aside the curtains, concealing a glass door to the balcony, and walk onto it. There doesn't seem to be anyone else in the apartment, and I can't come up with another way to escape anyway. Shrouded by darkness, I search for some way to make an exit via the balcony. The apartment is only on the second floor, so I'm safe to jump down, but I prefer to just climb down using the floor's lower barred window. I made sure that the fall is less than three feet in. I'm out. Surprisingly, my escape went smoother than expected. It was almost too easy. I can't believe it as I caress my right leg. I expected it to ache from the pressure of that jump. Thankfully, everything seems fine and I'm totally out. I stopped wasting time and began running, overjoyed the whole way home. Everything happened so fast. I try to convince myself that it was all just a bad dream and tomorrow I'll forget about it. For some reason, though, I just can't stop laughing. After all of that, I think it's probably due. <sighs> lordy, lordy, lord. Well, on that note, I think that's a good enough place to end it for now. Um, <laughs> that my breaking and entering scene with the American accent was just too much for me to handle. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave this here. Things are definitely starting to heat up. So, uh, yeah, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. But, um... Yep, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe before you leave. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!